can't, can't uh, really believe that it's session nine now of uh, Virtual Church. I'd like to think today about Thanksgiving and so I'm going to read to you one of my very favourite psalms. This is Psalm 103 and it says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. When I'm having my down days, I sometimes wonder whether God really has done all those things for me. Look at some of them, you renew my youth like the eagles. Well, I'm 65 now, I don't always feel very youthful. You satisfy my desires with good things. I've usually got a list of things I'd like to have and haven't, because sadly, um, human nature likes to grumble, doesn't it? But then fairly recently, when I was reflecting on this psalm, I discovered something about, about that list of things God has done for us. And it's this. All of them actually apply to Jesus. So if we say, well, Lord, when did you forgive all my sins? That was on the cross, wasn't it? That's when Jesus bore that burden for us because he saw we couldn't cope with it and we didn't have the strength to do anything about it. He took it from us on the cross in love. When did you heal all my diseases, Lord? Well, it says that he did that when he took that beating for us. Because it says, by your wounds, by your stripes, the, the marks left by the whipping, I'm healed. And what about redeeming my life from the pit? Well, surely that was on Easter Day, wasn't it? When there in the garden, the stone was rolled back. Jesus stood there alive as the conqueror over death. That's when he redeemed my life from the pit. Lord, when have you crowned me with love and compassion? But doesn't it say that Jesus ascended to the throne at the right hand of his Father? And it also says, look it up if you want to, in Ephesians and Colossians, that he raised us with him to sit with him in the heavenly places. That's when we were crowned. What about uh, satisfying my desires with good things? And actually, uh, when I get into the vein with this and, and let my mind dwell on this psalm, I think, well, every moment, every new day when I wake up, every breath that I take, and one day, when all this is over and our mortal life is past, it'll be even better because he'll certainly be satisfying our desires with good things when we come to feast with him in that wedding supper of the Lamb. What about renewing my youth like the eagles? When did that happen? Well, that happened when having ascended, the Lord poured out upon us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we were part of that because it says about that day that this promise is for you. It's for your children. It's for your children's children. It's for all who are far off. This renewal of the Spirit is for young and old, men and women, for all who call on the name of the Lord. So all of those things in that psalm are about the suffering, the cross, the resurrection, the ascension, the coming one day, 
and the gift of the Holy Spirit that are ours in Jesus' name. And I think if we think about those things, it will remind us that God loves us, that he wants to be with us and bless us. That's why we're doing virtual church, so we can all together be lifted up and, and strengthened through this time by his Spirit. So let's make a list of things that we want to be thankful for. I don't often give out homework on virtual church, but why not? It will be a great antidote to all those feelings about I'm stuck in here and I wish I could be with my mum or my brothers or my friends. I wish I could go to church. Instead of looking at the down things, look at some of the things that we have to be grateful for. And it's a cliche, count your blessings, it'll amaze you what the Lord has done, but it's only a cliche because it is true. It's knowing that we have things to give, thank for, to give thanks for that makes us positive about life and that helps us look for good things instead of getting absorbed in bad things, that makes us focused on Christ instead of focused on our problems. So try it. In a moment I'll pray. I've just got one notice which is I'm trying to leave St Andrews open every day from 10.30 till 5.30. Uh, we're, we're doing all the right things. The gel is there. There's a notice. Gel your hands when you come in and when you go out again. So you can't bring germs in with you and you can't take them out with you. Um, keep social distancing. If anyone else comes in, you know, stay back. A minimum of two metres, more if you can. Uh, we're washing the doorknobs and everything uh, when I open up, when I close it down. Uh, but it's just there if someone wants to take some time for quiet, for reflection. Well, then it's there for us. So um, I hope to keep that up. Sooner or later maybe the government or the bishops or something will say stop doing it. That's fine. We'll stop doing it then, but uh, I'd like you to know it's there in case you, you're missing going along. And now for our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving all my sins on the cross for healing all my diseases in your sufferings, for redeeming my life from the pit when you rose again, for raising me into the heavenly places so that I am crowned with love and compassion, for satisfying my desires with good things, uh, yes, day to day, but one day in your presence and for pouring out your Holy Spirit so my youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, and especially with those who are lonely and ill and isolated, from this time forth and forevermore. Amen.